Greetings everyone, I am Paola of Paola Ponce Nails and today I'm going to show you how to create 3D gel flowers. So, a lot of people use 3D gel nail art um, using the texture gel. Today I'm going to show you how to use it with uh, gel art powder or simply acrylic powder. So let's get started. is basically flowers created with accents gel art powder and when I use this powder it really much resembled acrylic powder so feel free to try with acrylic powder at your uh, location if you do not have this accents gel art powder all right so we want to start off with a base color for this example I'm using Evo to by bio sculpture in color angela and angela is pretty much a translucent sort of medium coverage pink gel that's really dainty and it really goes with a lot of soft nail nail art designs such as our uh juicy holo videos make sure to check that out uh it is number two for angela if you look an evil bioscopture too. You don't necessarily have to be certified by bioscopture to buy this product, so feel free to uh, look for that product. Color Angela number two in the bioscopture USA website. Okay, I've applied one color of the Angela color on my uh, prep nail here, and I'm basically going to move on to starting to create my 3D gel art here now i really wanted it to be chic and fun and clients seem to always gravitate towards a glitter type of nail so i did want to add a hint of glitter and here's a little secret for you uh, from me and that is jellish the vegas nights glitter polish it's a really nice um uh, soft glitter it's not too overpowering and it's not minimal sheer it's really a full glitter but believe me when i say it's very moderate in coverage okay so i'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of my jellish vegas nights on this angela by evil by bio sculpture color here just one coat if you want a little more pink or a little bit closer to medium coverage go ahead and apply those two coats of color again i've only applied one coat of color i want to move on to my glitter application just want to make it really soft really gentle because what's going to happen is that when when i create my gel art um 3d flower here my flower is going to be a little bit more pigmented so i do want to contrast between the two and that is the reason why i'm using a lighter pink as the base and then a more pigmented pink for my actual flowers go ahead and shake this bottle so that you can get um all of the product from the bottom to the top and simply apply a generous amount of this vegas nights glitter onto your already coated nail here cure that for the manufacturer's recommended time and that would be 30 seconds in an led light for this product meantime when while that's curing i want to go ahead and prep my gel art powder so that i can create this angela design now i do want my flowers to be a little bit more uh, pigmented so i want there to be a contrast so i'm going to go ahead and use a highly or a more pigmented pink i should say for this type of nail art i'm going to start with a one-to-one -one ratio so a one-to-one -one powder um, versus gel uh, ratio and my recommendation is to use highly pigmented products so 
In my experience, Japanese gel products are highly pigmented and that's usually what I stick to, okay? Oops, okay. I'm gonna use Vitro's number 214 here, pastel neon pink to coat my gel art powder by accents here. Again, go ahead and try this with simply a colored acrylic powder if you wish, and then maybe add a little bit of uh, viscous clear gel to see if you can get the same consistency. Nail art is all about having fun and trying things, so don't be afraid to do that. I'm going to take a little spatula or a steering stick. We're going to make sure it's clean and clear from any uh, formal residue. Let that evaporate. And I want to take one portion of this clear gel. Oops, I need a little too much there. But I can still um, divide this like about there. All right, I'm gonna clean that and that spatula. Close my product. I never want to spill or contaminate any product that I'm working with. Nail products are expensive and you definitely want to keep that in mind when um, working with nail art. You don't want to spill or contaminate. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my highly pigmented gel product here. In this case, I'm using Vetro Color Pot number 214 and I'm just going to drop that there and now I'm going to mix the powder. You basically want to create um, very firm bead of gel and you'll notice that I'll soon start losing the consistency of the gel and it'll start getting into really really hard product. I like this consistency again for me this is like a one-to-one -one ratio feel free to add a little bit of more powder if you feel that your um, consistency is still a little bit too soft and you want it a little bit more firm then add more powder if your consistency is a little bit more liquidy um, or too firm then go ahead and apply more gel just play with it a little bit like the consistency of this I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here and see where I'm at if, again if I need a little bit more powder I will be able to tell and I'll add more I do recommend wearing gloves because you in order to feel the consistency of the uh, product mix that you just created you kind of want to touch it but you never want to touch a uh, gel product or acrylic product when it's you know, exposed like this in a raw form. You always want to take your gloves just to make sure you never have an allergic reaction. Okay, so I'll wait for that and I'll pull my nail here. Now, my recommendation is to always work with a sticky layer or an inhibition layer. Um, never work with non-wipe or non-tacky surface because this gel here that you just created might not adhere well to this so when you are creating your flower patterns then you will not have any nice sort of um you know adhesion or texture or anything that the product holds on to so do work with the tacky layer there okay now very important to have a toothpick in this case i have a metal toothpick and this metal toothpick is really cool um, i'll tell you who i got it from it's bio sculpture bio sculpture is the company where i got this metal toothpick well metal pick really it's not a toothpick you wouldn't pick your tooth with this i hope but um you could use a toothpick and you still want to have your uh, gel art powder or your acrylic powder whichever you decided for um because you're gonna use a little bit of it all right so now you want to take a little bead of this and the reason why i want you to wear your glove is because you actually might want to feel it a little bit and see where it's at okay so you notice it's a very thick consistency and you 
you just kind of want to grab a little bit enough for a flower so maybe around there right and you kind of want to see what it's doing see i might think it's a little liquidy So what I'm gonna do, if I feel like it's too liquidy, I'm gonna add a little bit more powder to it. Might be a good idea to wear a second glove. So you can maneuver, and again, you don't get this product on your skin, on your face, on your eyes, anything like that. Either way, I always work with uh, gloves with my clients, so it's not like I'm making an exception for this video. This is my standard protocol anyways. I find that I'm just a little bit kind of liquidy, so I'm grabbing more powder. And let's see now. It's almost like you want to work with Play-Doh. Okay, just to give you an idea of what the consistency of the product should be. Just take a little practice. Again, if you don't have this uh, gel art powder, feel free to work with acrylic. So here you can see, this is coming up to be more like a Play-Doh little kind of ball. And that's exactly the consistency that you want, kind of like a Play-Doh ball. Now this is too big to create a flower on my nail here. So I'm actually going to divide this into two, cut it out and put it there, hopefully it'll stick nicely. And take the remaining part, make a little ball there. And this ball is pretty much what I want to create either a rose or a flower of some sort. You'll decide what you can see. I do like to always have a little bit of extra powder in care if I feel like my little bead here is getting too sticky. This is perfect. There. All right, so feel free to wipe your fingers with alcohol from this excess here. And now what you want to take is either your toothpick or your metal pick, right? And we have this little ball here and what you can create is like a little center to your flower or your rose whatever you want to call it and then start kind of breaking it up into like C patterns most people like the um, the rose look so by all means try to accomplish that and you'll notice when I'm breaking this up, it literally is like tearing apart. So in order to avoid that, I would dip my little toothpick into the uh, art powder or the acrylic form here and then kind of start breaking that up a little bit more. And then I'm breaking that up a little bit more. Don't let it get too dry because then you'll lose some of the petals here. Now you can also take uh, your dotting tool. Create a little bit more kind of texture here. your product to be a little harder then you can definitely create a rose and I do like gel because you can always always just keep playing with it it won't harden on you like acrylic will so 
So keep that in mind when you decide what medium to work with. Okay. So I've just added more product to this. And I basically want to flatten it out. And I'm using my metal pick here. See how I get just kind of stirred all over if I didn't like the way it broke. Now what I would recommend is to wipe your dotting tool, dip it into the drying, uh, the dry uh, powder, the gel parted powder, and then create again your center. Right? And then now start creating your pattern with it. bit more perhaps after every like four or five taps right now I'm gonna start with my other flower here set that down for a second I'm gonna take this so it doesn't get too sticky that's why I do the dipping in the powder first I'm not sure what that is Really, this is more like a generic flower where you can just kind of create different imprints on it but if you wanted to create a rose and I would just lay it there pat it flat right extend this little bead maybe grab a little bit more the reason why you grab a little more powder is so that it doesn't get too sticky so if you're finding it to be like really sticky all over you then grab a little bit more powder and it will basically unstick it or get it loose okay so now I want to create my center right of the rose here and then maybe I want to cut out rose patterns so rose patterns usually go into like a C pattern oh, you see it gets sticky so you want to grab a little bit more of this guy guy so it doesn't get stuck to your tool and that looks a little messy but that's fine you're gonna grab your dotting tool dip that into the powder and flatten it out a little bit more really enjoy working with gel because it's not dry until you say it it should be dry So you've created these beautiful 3D flowers. My recommendation is to make it extra special. So take a little bit of Belder gel, clean your dotting tool with like 90% alcohol, let that evaporate, dab the center with it, clean that on a lint-free surface. Take your crystals, I have them right here. And I believe I had another one here. There we go. Not on a lint free surface. And embed them onto your application. 
that is all you need. Cure that. I would say give that a full cure in your LED life. So for 30 seconds, close all of your product. Meantime, gel our powder or any acrylic product that you may have used. If it's already colored and you don't really need to add pigment, you might just want to add a builder gel to it to uh, make it a little bit viscous. But if you're strictly dealing with gel, then just use color gel, highly pigmented product. In this case, we use number 214 by Vitro to give it color, to give the powder color. And then our product will be done. So you've added builder gel to make sure that these uh, crystals have been embedded. Now your 3D gel has also been cured. And all you will need now is basically a non-white top coat. I'm gonna use Vetro's non-white top coat. Feel free to use whichever one you like. And so just go ahead and oops, in case your design. Give that a full cure of 60 seconds in your LED light and you are done folks. You are now completed and have learned how to create 3D gel art flowers. So, if you enjoyed this lesson, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, I know this is a very complicated sort of uh, lesson here with the 3D gel art. Uh, make sure to mention any feedback, any questions in our comment section. And as always, make sure you never miss a video by subscribing to our channel. We will see you on our next video lesson. Goodbye.